It's Trent from the AI Kingdom and today I have another tutorial on how you guys can create your very own 3D shapes using OpenAI's brand new software called Shape E. It's going to be a tutorial for all learners and I'll make sure to go through every step as easily as possible. All I ask of you guys go down and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel as I post daily AI content that I'm sure you guys will enjoy. With that out of the way, let's get into what you can actually create with Shape E. You, keep in mind this is brand new this just came out about a week ago from this video going up and the elements you can create so far are really cool and there's a lot of stuff you could do with these 3d shapes it's going to save the time of 3d designers and obviously this is the earliest version so the generations that you get aren't going to be 4k renders but they are going to be a high enough quality of a render that you can actually see the object you're creating and minor details that make it look pretty decent so you can see right here we have an airplane that looks like a banana bowl of vegetables a penguin a chair that looks like an avocado and i can just tell from like indie styled video games this is going to be amazing it's going to save indie developers so much time and let's say you're building your first video game and you just don't have time to generate all these 3d assets well now you can through ai now there will be a white paper Paper, I'll have a link down below that really goes in depth on how this technology works. I'm not going to explain it within this video as I don't want to bore any of you guys. So let's get started into how you can actually start generating 3D elements through text to 3D. So I'll have a Google Collab link down below. And if you haven't used Google Collab, don't worry, I'll take you through it. All you have to do is press the play button or the run cell button that you can see at the left screen here. So we're just going to run and we are going to select run anyway. Shout out to the little coder. This is where I actually saw the technology from first. So we're just going to hit run and just wait for everything to clone. Depending on how good of quality your PC is, it's going to take more or less time. Now, the next thing you want to do after you see this check mark, you just want to run the next cell. Then we can run the pip install. After that's finished, you just want to run the cell for the import torch and you just want to keep on running all of these cells now if you have an nvidia gpu you don't have to change anything with the device equals torch device however if you're like me and you have an amd gpu you want to get rid of the cuda text and only have in these brackets cpu so just like you see on the screen right here and then you won't get an error in the next cell now it's going to take a while to start installing like i said the slower your pc is or the less good of specs your PC has the slower this is going to take if you guys do run into any additional errors make sure to leave them down in the comment section or you guys can join my discord server and I'll hopefully be able to help you out with whatever error you have as I've run into errors in the past when using different programs in Google Colab so I could share some of my insight on some of those errors already perfect the next thing we want to do is actually generate our 3d shapes so for today's tutorial let's do a sauce bottle keep it simple and we'll do batch size as one obviously the more you add to your batch size so let's say you do a batch size of 10 you're gonna get 10 generations but it's going to take so long on your computer so i recommend if you're just trying things out keep it at one and then you can obviously increase it as you go on keep your guidance scale at 15 you can always play around with it later and we're not going to change any of the other settings so i'm just going to run this cell now after that cell is complete you can run your final cell which will actually render out that 3d object now keep in mind you might want to make the size a lot larger so it's not as small of a render however this is going to take a lot longer for you to render out your 3d image just because obviously it's a bigger file size now if you do have any errors that you can't seem to fix you can also go to hugging face in which this space is created down below i'll have the link to it that you guys can go and try the program out for yourself obviously this option is going to take a lot longer however it's way more noob proof and you're not going to run into any errors so let's do an airplane that looks 
like bacon. I have no idea how that's going to turn out, but we can always see how it will look. So there we go. An airplane that looks like bacon. I can kind of see it. Obviously, these renders aren't as great and you can change some settings within this hugging face space, but it's really not as good as the Google Colab. You can also do image to 3D. I haven't really tried this out. So let's do this model airplane image and see if it's able to recreate it in 3D. I haven't personally tried this out, so I'm actually curious to see how it'll look. Alrighty, and this is what we got for the image to 3D. So yeah, definitely did not work nearly as good. It's kind of an abomination of an object, but still the idea is pretty cool. And keep in mind, this is only one week into image and text to 3D. So this is the worst it's going to ever be. If you guys did enjoy this video though, please do leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel as I post daily AI content on the latest and greatest technology that you guys can use in your daily lives. That being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you later.